Paper Mario is a game where Mario characters are made of, well, paper. But things go from nice and charming to incredibly cursed very quickly once you hack the game's camera. One funny observation is that if we look at this bob -omb with an eye patch from behind, you'll see that his eye patch extends around all the way behind him, and there's another eye patch on his back. You know the expression having eyes on the back of your head? Well, this bob -omb has an eye patch on the back of his head. Characters can face forwards and backwards, and they can look fine both ways, and this is because of how layers of the character model are stacked on top of each other in this game. In some characters, like Princess Peach, this is more obvious, and you can have a nice kind of 3D effect with how these layers are stacked on top of each other. But if you hack the camera to see a character from their non-active side, what you see might look incredibly cursed, like a faceless toad because the toad's face is on the other side right now. Goombella is a character that looks pretty normal from behind, unlike Mario and Toadsworth, who, just like other Toads, has no face when you're looking at them from behind. If you look at this mouse character from behind, you can see all the parts that make up a mouse, and from the front, it looks like a normal Paper Mario character. If we move around to the back of this dog character, his head looks like it's partially made up out of an acorn. But one of my favorites has to be these Pianta guys. They look very formal with their tuxedos from the front here, but when you look at them from behind with a hacked camera, which you can't normally see in the game, they've got these low-cut tops from the back, exposing a lot of their upper back, and it's hilarious to know that these guys are so formal with their suits from the front, but the character models look like this from the back. And yeah, Mario showing Goombella a map looks pretty cursed when you look at it from a different camera angle. There are these enemies here who get beaten up by the Piantas in a cutscene in the background, and from behind, part of their head looks like it makes the shape of a heart. Since we still have a hacked camera available here, you can see that during this cutscene where Goombella joins your party, if you zoom out, you can see that the rest of the characters in Rogueport are still there behind you. You might be wondering what this cooking toad named Zesty looks like from behind. She looks pretty normal aside from the fact that she has an exact replica of her apron that she's wearing behind her also. And normally in this game, you step on Zesty's contact lens and you break it, and then she blocks you from entering this next loading zone to the next area of the game until you bring her back some new contact lenses. And this right here was brilliant, safe game design on the part of the game developers. Because if you hack your position to skip past Zesty, or if there is some way to skip past Zesty without hacking the game, this loading zone isn't active so it doesn't take you anywhere. I edited Mario's position to skip past this gate where you normally need Professor Frankly to be with you to unlock the gate, and there must be a flag in the game that automatically says Professor Frankly to be with you when you enter this pipe, because Professor Frankly joins us all of a sudden. Down in the Rogueport sewers, there's this creepy looking Mr. Potato Head guy with a very uncomfortable, nervous smile. And if we look at him from behind, he has a completely bare back. You'd think that maybe his shirt would cover some of his back. The bandits and the bob -ombs look just fine from behind, and the toad, just like other toads, is faceless. And when a toad has an apron, when we look at them from behind, the apron ends up being mirrored. There's this guy in a back alley in Rogueport here named Darkly, and Darkly is from Twilight Town, and when we look at him from behind, he's got a missing face, so he's a bit less creepy than backwards Mario. I hacked Mario's position again so that we could enter this room with the teleporter early, and when Mario leaves the room, Goombella says, We're underneath Rogueport! The x knots use that thing to come here from the moon! And that dialogue gets triggered even though we haven't been to the moon yet, and we don't know where the x knots are. Remember how this Professor Frankly was added to our party once we went down the pipe? Well, let's head on over to the real Professor Frankly's house to see if there's going to be a second Professor Frankly there, and yes, there are now two Professor Franklys. I don't know which of these Goombella is speaking to. And you might have noticed that things are looking pretty high resolution for a GameCube game in this video here, and that's because we're using an HD texture pack for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. So something as simple as this little book on Professor Frankly's table has a crazy amount of detail, even if we zoom in on it. And after this dialogue with Professor Frankly ends, the new Professor Frankly disappears and pops into nothing, so we only have one Professor Frankly with us, unfortunately. And when we went outside and this Professor Frankly went to unlock the gate that he's normally supposed to unlock, the same gate that we've skipped earlier, the game softlocks here and we can't continue. When we get to see some Koopas, which are one of the most iconic Mario enemies, you might be scared to see how cursed they look from behind. Their arm is on the wrong way, they have blank eyes because of how their pupils appear in the front but not in the back, 
you can see the full extent of the tail, which is normally covered by the shell when you look at it from the front. The neck object looks weird, and there's just so much that looks wrong with the Koopa, but this is what the Koopa looks like from behind because this is how these pieces are layered. And yes, all Koopas that we are going to see are going to be looking very demonic from behind. There's this blue disco character named Dupree, and in some other languages his name is a reference to Elvis, and from behind, it just looks like his head is on backwards, but his body's still facing the right way. General White, the favorite bob -omb of everyone in this Paper Mario game, looks like a regular bob -omb from behind, not too crazy, but we'll see some crazy bob -omb's later. And we need more faceless little toads because we do not have enough of them. I wanted to see Koopy Koo from behind, and as I rotated the camera around, we saw Koops inside the house. He's looking just as cursed as the other Koopas, and he's definitely the most cursed partner that we have seen so far. It's funny that from the front, Koopy Koo's hair looks normal here, and from behind, when we're looking at it from behind, you can see how far the hair object extends out and how much of it is covered when you're looking at it from the front. And it's interesting that it's not only characters who are layered like this, but also the background. And this is something that you'll see in a lot of games, like certain levels of Super Smash Bros. Melee, where the background is made up of layers like this. At Far Outpost, there's normally a cannon below the city here, and if you hack the camera, you can see that the cannon is actually down here all along. Lakitu's have a tough smirk, a cloud with sunglasses, and a little shell that's just peeking out behind them. But when you look at them from behind, the Lakitu is still staring at you, you can see the full tiny little shell, and the cloud has no face now. So the Lakitu is watching you no matter where you go. And if you like this Lakitu's little smile, you can give this video a like if you're enjoying the video. There's this rich bob -omb family at Glitzville, and one interesting thing to point out about their child is that you can see how far down the wick extends from behind, but from the front it just looks like the wick goes into the top part of the bob -omb, like a normal bob -omb. This innocent little shopkeeper toad might look like he's holding a pencil behind his ear. That's something that you might do sometimes. But from behind, it looks like the pencil is going through this poor toad's head. We've got a Lakitu cameraman and a carrot reporter, which isn't anything strange. We shouldn't ask any questions about this. And what do you see when you look at this from behind? The camera is always watching you. You can never escape the cameraman. He's always filming you no matter where you go. If you thought regular Koopas were frightening from behind, get ready to see a dark Koopa troll from behind. Because of the overlapping Koopa parts and the metallic helmet, this looks like a failed science experiment that is ready to be tossed aside. And something that I didn't notice until editing this clip was that Professor Frankly is still in the background here, running against the door as if he's going, let me in, let me in. Grubba comes onto the stage here, and from what we've seen before, usually when someone's dressed up nicely with a bow tie and a nice suit, when we check them out from behind we see that they're wearing nothing. Again. Why do these people not wear clothes on their backs? He actually looks like a funny little blue duck from back here. The mouth really makes him look like a little blue duck. He looks like he has a little duck mouth here. I was really curious about how these security guards would look like from behind, and they actually still had a suit on from behind, which is nice, that's very formal of them. It's just that their head was rotated 180 degrees, or more like 170 degrees. I was curious about how loading zones behind doors would work, and this is what happened when we hacked Mario's position to be through the door before talking to the security guard. Let's talk to him. What's that? You want to be a fighter, bub? Oh, alright, go on in. Mr. Grubba's just inside. We already are inside. Oh, he steps away from the door. Now all of a sudden we can walk in. And imagine playing the full game Paper Mario with a Thousand Year Door like this. Looking at the game from this angle, you get to see a blue duck, a cursed Mario, a very cursed Cooper, a Professor Frankly with you for the whole game. It definitely makes hidden star pieces a lot less hidden when you play looking at the game like this. Koopas being cursed should be no surprise right now, but that doesn't make seeing a hammer bro any less frightening than it is. From the front, it looks like the hammer bro is actually holding the hammer, but from the back, you can see that the fingers don't actually wrap around the hammer, and there's no need to see that because you don't normally see it from this angle. If we take a look at a red spike top from behind, this looks like a complete mess because of all the overlapping parts that you don't get to see. And we've got one more Koopa with sunglasses, but since the sunglasses cover the eyes from the front, they don't cover the eyes from the back, and it looks like this. 
If we take a look at the toad assistant Jolene from behind, her head is on backwards, you can see the front of her clothes, you don't see her glasses, and a bit of her hair sticks out from the front also. And during the cutscene where Jolene leads you over to the locker room, I love Mario's vertical position to be up in the air so he floats along. These cactus enemies called Pokies look like normal from behind, except they don't have any eyes. Let's look at the ghost partner, Flurry. Take a look at what this character is going to look like when we look at it from behind. I'll let you know, this is not what I expected Flurry to look like from behind with all these overlapping objects. I did not expect Flurry to be a blob monster. When we look at the Yoshi partner from the side, it ends up being a bit scarier than I thought it would be because of the eyes. And you can let me know in a comment what color Yoshi you had when you played through this game, or what your favorite color Yoshi is. Merlin looks incredibly normal from behind, except for his shoes, which are normally covered up when you look at him from the front. There's a traveling salesman in Rogueport named Charlyton, and when we take a look at him from behind, this might not look very strange at first, but there's something very deceptive about this when you see the front again. From the front, it looks like this backpack goes all the way across his back, and it looks like he has a backpack strap around each of his arms, but from behind, it's a tiny backpack that only covers half of his back. This looks like something out of a Mario and Luigi game. Oh, and there's a toad girl up there. Hello, toad girl up there without a face. A backwards apron, Toadsworth with his head on backwards and no face, not a problem. And Flavio. And now we are in a train. And this is something interesting that you'll see in the design of games a lot when there are backgrounds that are going by. This looks like you're actually in a train and you're going by some background, but what's actually happening, and we can see this if we move the camera, is that objects are just flying by you to make it look like you're moving by the background. Sometimes you see a cactus flying by, sometimes some rocky formation. And here's what the train conductor toad looks like from behind. Just a standard faceless toad. Next, we get to take a look at this toad character named Hefty from behind. Let's see. Oh my goodness! Whoa! <laughs> uh, okay, first I was thinking he has two arms, but that's just like up to his elbow and then the rest of his arm. But man, he's got no shirt back here! Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I guess there's no point in giving him a shirt back here. Cause like, you can't see it from that angle. There is a ghost toad on the XS Express, and the most surprising thing about this ghost toad is that from behind, they still have a face, unlike any of the other toads that we've seen. Vivian is a great partner who looks sweet and perfect, whether we look at her from the front or the back, maybe her hat looks a little different, but that's okay. There's normally a bar here that prevents you from getting past here as Mario, so I naturally wanted to edit Mario's position to make a pass and check out what's back here, and there are some solid objects that you could interact with, and there's some weird lighting, but nothing else really here. This is what a normal penguin looks like. You can see the white part and the blue part, but from behind, it looks like the arm is sticking out of the wrong spot, and the white part is overlapping strangely because of the different angle that we're looking at this at. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes! The guy that calls you Luigi for the whole game. Okay, so this penguin looks kind of as expected. After you've seen the other penguin, then you'll know that the arm sticks out like this. And the way that the- it looks like his backpack goes through him. The strap on his backpack, instead of going around him, it goes through him. I was editing Mario's position to see what would happen if we fell off the map, and I was a bit surprised at what we found here. Here's what happens if you fall off the map. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't expect that! Oh, that's really cool. So this works in a way that's really similar to... This works in a way that's really similar to the original Paper Mario. If there are characters used for cutscenes, then it looks like they're stored beneath the level like that. I didn't expect that. I was just goofing off. I just wanted to fall off the level and show you guys what happens when you fall off the level. But... We ended up seeing, yeah, Kami Koopa and all these other characters here. So here are characters that are used in cutscenes. Yeah, and they're all stacked together. So look, from behind, this is what you see. There's Kami Koopa, uh, there's the penguin investigator. Who else is here? This is just an assortment of people. There's a top hat, so the top hat, it looks like it's from the bob -omb guy. I tried this in a nearby room and something similar happens. It's also funny that sometimes you'll have your partners used in a specific cutscene, and even if you bring out your partner and drop down below the level, you'll still see a copy of your partner stored below the level that's normally used in the cutscenes. Near Petal Meadows, I dropped down below the level and this is what I saw. It's Hooktail and Gabby Koopa, but look how small Hooktail is. That's so weird how small Hooktail is. 
pretty cool how Hooktail's 3D, but it's, it's, uh, this is giving me Shrek vibes with Donkey and the dragon. There's a blue rat businessman that we saw at Glitzville, and here's what he looks like from behind. And you might know that the Bob Omb family from earlier is supposed to be at Poshley Heights right now, but since they're at Glitzville earlier in the game, they're now stored below the level where you can't normally see them. Maybe they just want to spend some family time down there. I was wondering what was below this part of Glitzville, and this is what I saw when I went below the level. Imagine coming into the stream at a moment like this, you'd be like, what in the world is going on? Imagine if this was someone's first time in this stream and they saw this. At Glitzville, there are sometimes fights going on here, and you can't make it through to the fight because of the NPCs blocking you. But if you hack your way through, this is what happens. <laughs> We're joining in on the fight! We are going to help the fight, this is illegal! Someone from the audience has just jumped up to join in on the fight! Oh my goodness, what is going on? Oh, what is that? He's swapping partners! He's bringing out Bobbery! Oh my goodness, he throws Bobbery! The bob explodes, damaging them! I put Mario here by hacking his position, you can't normally get here, and here's what happens if you go through this door that you can't normally go through. And you can actually take that door! <laughs> <laughs> but you're not supposed to be able to take this door, so you're back here. We're actually behind the door right now. What if we talk to him? No one goes in here unless they're signed up for an official match. Well, I must be signed up for an official match because I'm literally in there. <laughs> That's really funny. We might have thought that we took care of Grubba before, but if we go below the level, his cage is still down here, below the level. And if we go a bit farther down, we can still see Grubba and the boss Grubba, and he looks very angry that he is being kept below the level. This is a bit like that meme, don't ever talk to me or my son ever again. Bobbery is an incredibly detailed partner, and I was shocked that when we hacked the camera and looked at him from behind, he looks like a real bob -omb. There's a real bob -omb under that mustache and that hat. You can see the actual bob -omb outline and the mustache and the hat, they're all just accessories. Just like the Piantas from before, these Piantas all love their low-cut shirts on the back when we take a look at them from behind. And the same is even true of Don Pianta if we make our way over to Don Pianta. Below the jungle, there are all kinds of characters normally used in cutscenes and areas here that are stored on top of each other. The water that surrounds the island, it looks like it has some depth to it, but if you hack yourself to be below the water, you can see that there isn't really much to it, and there's nothing below the surface of the water. So we've already seen a few rooms where NPCs were stored below the level and stacked on top of each other, but I was really surprised at what we saw in this one room in the jungle here. What? They're just walking around here! They're not even just stored, but they're walking around! That's so weird! That's so weird! I haven't seen anything like this before. Oh my goodness, and you can see that the guy, that he still has the diamond ring. So that's really interesting to see them moving like this. Oh! And there are some characters that are- what the- what is he holding? What in the world? Oh, uh, okay, that's the fish. I'm like, it looks like he's just holding someone. If we head on over to the Great Tree and we look at what's below the Great Tree, there are a bunch of punies and a toad stored below the level. And it looks like the punies are eating the toad's face. The partner Miss Mouse looked very normal when we took a look at this partner from behind. And you might remember when you first meet the partner Flurry in this game that she says she can't come out until she gets her necklace back, but if you hack the camera and you take a look at her, then you realize that she has her necklace all along. Why is she making you chase after a necklace that she already has? There's a scene in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door where Princess Peach hops into the shower and you can see her hang up her dress. You might be wondering what her character model looks like right now since her dress is hanging and oh my goodness she is still wearing a dress in the shower. Why is she showering while wearing a dress? Where did that second dress come from? How many layers of dresses is she wearing? I know that this is a really special game for a lot of people, and I hope you liked seeing some of my fun tests in this game. I love doing tests and experiments like this in games, seeing what is possible, and I really appreciate you watching this far into the video. If you're interested in seeing stuff like this live, you can check out my live streams, or I'd really appreciate you clicking the subscribe button because you'll be notified when new videos come out. Wishing all of you an absolutely amazing day ahead of you, and take care, everybody.